This is Duke University. In the 17th century, we see a period of great contestation between the Dutch um, and the Spaniards in the north of the island also, but the Dutch coming in to overtake the native tribes and their labor and their resources, um, conscripting also Han Chinese laborers from the mainland. Um, and then at the end of the century, the um, helm goes to the new Manchu dynasty, which remains the hegemon in Taiwan for over 200 years until 1895, when Taiwan as a whole is ceded to Japan following the uh, first Sino-Japanese War. For 50 years after that, Taiwan is under Japan. From 1945 to the present, the government in Taiwan uh, has been uh, the self-styled Republic of China, although uh, many countries since the 50s have not recognized it as such. So as Richard Suchansky has said on the experimental films of Nathaniel Dorsky, showing here this weekend at Duke, his works are decontextualized and sometimes unmoored from their surroundings allowing connections to develop which resonate not only between shots, but also across the films as a whole, encouraging more active forms of awareness. Of course, this notion of decontextualization is a dynamic one. When something is decontextualized from one web or configuration, it is projected into the moment of its own micro Big Bang or long morphing, the creation of new becomings, scatterings, tanglings, adhesions, or it may even simultaneously precipitate as its own object in the thought of philosopher Gilles Deleuze, the substrate of his binomial of endo and exo consistency. Endo consistency is how things hold together from within, which does not require representational merit. And exo consistency is how a subject of discourse holds up by its external relations and dynamics. Strictly speaking, Consistency, or consistence, in the Deleuzean sense is not logical, but intuitive, conceptual more than empirical. Either way, each of these forms of structural coherence, inner or outer, may be actual, demonstrable, measurable, repeatable, or indeed virtual, capable of erupting into the actual any moment or long since without losing a bit of their virtuality if they don't. It is an intriguing question how these two binomials, endo and exo consistency and actuality versus the virtual, map onto each other. Rather than answer that question today, what I'd like to do instead is play with and trouble the waters between these notions in a personalized geophilosophy of my childhood hometown of Tainan, Taiwan, as an empirical concept. Western contact with my home region began centuries before. Um, when Portuguese sailors coming up probably from their pre-Malay colony, colony Malacca in 1542 spotted the island that became Taiwan and moved by its appearance exclaimed, Ia Formosa, beautiful island. But piracy in the southeast coast of China grew rife in the later Ming Dynasty. Out of this rowdy cauldron of sea banditry and trade came uh, Zheng Zhilong, um, born in 1604 in Quanzhou. Guanxi Prefecture of Wujian or Hokkien. Bouncing around the south southeastern seaboard, he eventually built a successful syndicate of pirate and pirates and pirate ships, founding posts near Tainan. After capturing the southern Ming fleet, the Imperial Ming fleet, he then was granted command of the very fleet he had seized. Now Zheng had a son, Zheng Chenggong or Deng Xianggong wasn't buying his father's policy of extreme expediency. Instead, he took over his father's command, and with the remnant Ming court in tow, succeeded uh, in crossing the Taiwan Strait and taking over Tainan. In conventional Han Chinese histori historiography, he's regarded as the father of Taiwan. And guardian through his legacy of Han Chinese culture, both in its resistance to the Qing rule under the Manchus and a rallying figure against all foreign, including later Japanese, domination, but not 
the nationalist Chinese domination, because it is the very nationalist Chinese who propagated this narrative to suggest a repeat of history of a loyal, uh, older regime trying to fight for its survival in Taiwan. The liberation of Taiwan attributed to him was, in truth, an invasion against the established Dutch there. The Dutch weren't always so appreciative of their host culture, however, to the earliest people to inhabit this part of the island, from native pre-Hunt Saraen culture of the Tainan region. One of the cultural projects of the colonial period was Christianization. And here's uh, an example of a uh, Gospel of Matthew printed both in Dutch and in the Saraen, uh, Saraen uh, tongue. The extent to which the locals received their Christian tutelage with joy was revealed when they eventually turned against the Dutch at Koxinga's invasion and siege, and at the departure of the Europeans, destroyed the Christian books they were obliged to read, killing those uh, Dutch that they could. We might see this rejection of Dutch rule as symbolic of the larger tug and shove of the island's geology and geography. It appears that Taiwan finally split after complex plate subductions and many volcanic upheavals from the mainland about eight to 10,000 years ago. The pre-Han natives became islanders willy-nilly. They were just split off from, from the mainland. But they did not simply stop there. According to ongoing research, the 10 or so major tribes of indigenous Taiwanese have languages related to the Austronesians throughout the Pacific and Indian Ocean basins, from Madagascar off the coast of Africa all the way to Easter Islands. The name Taiwan is derived from a local Sarayan term, Taiwan or Taiwan, people of the boat, from Tao, people, and Awan, canoe or boat. You would think that because of the autochthonous origin of the name Taiwan in the Sarayan language, the people to whom it belongs would have had first dibs at being recognized as indigenous of the island. Not so. Long excluded from both the governmental and intertribal uh, nod, the group formally applied in 2009 for official status, and to my knowledge, still has not received it. This, you see this line right below the inside of my elbow. And I'll just come around and show you. See this line? Okay. This line. This is the inscription of history on my body. According to recent study, it is a line that comes from indigenous genes. The Han Chinese imported by the Dutch largely came as single male laborers, um, and many married local Saryan women. Not only did this intermarriage leave a mark on subsequent progeny, it also had the effect of synthesizing the Saryans at large. Taiwan has never been decolonialized, not only because it kept getting shunted from one colonial overlord to another, but because as Emma Teng of MIT has observed, the imperialism or colonialism of the Qing, much less that of ROC or potentially of the PRC, has never been recognized or acknowledged. But in closing, I'd like to suggest that Tainan's plurifluent, by which I mean going in many different directions and carrying different things, um, plurifluent trajectories and vectors as a self-differentiating exoconsistency gestures toward, and indeed perform, a denationalized space, both virtual and actual. As such, it also opens a path to unthinking Taiwan at large as a nationalistic anomaly and deficit. Hi, uh, great talk, uh, very interesting. Um, so something I noticed, um, you talked a lot about, you know, all these historical vectors coming into Tainan and how those have affected its trajectory over time. But one word that I noticed you didn't use is globalization. Do you feel like the term globalization and what it stands for and what it means has had an effect on Tainan's historical trajectory? Thank you for that question. It's a, a very salient one. And uh, what I would say is that um, obviously what happened uh, in Tainan in the 17th century already was the beginning of modern globalization. No question about that. The question is, how we think of uh, things that we have come to accept as globalization insofar as we tend to assume that globalization is um, a non-negotiable and that it uh, operates under the aegis of a uh, world system, right? a 
singular, singular or single world system. Uh, my choice in not using that word is precisely to resist that tendency and that risk. 